Hey, what's up guys? It's Fisal here and in this video we're going to be talking about the best Sony cameras for vlogging in 4K. Yes, I'm going to be talking about cameras like the Sony ZV-1, the Sony ZV-E10 which I'm currently using to record this video and the Sony A7C. These are fairly recent cameras that are you know, very adequately priced and we're going to go into the specs, the features, some of the technicalities and and we did something special we did a vlog sort of a day in the life kind of vlog yes inside this video that you're watching right now we're going to show you a vlog i used all three cameras in a sort of competitive manner in a way i just showed all three cameras i'm excited for it as you can probably tell and i hope you are too if you're new to the channel welcome and if you're returning welcome back i'd love it if you could hit that like button so more people can benefit from the knowledge that we'll be sharing in this video all right i've said too much i'll shut up now without further ado Let's get into the video. In today's video, we're going to look at all these three cameras from Sony. And I think that these are some of the best cameras for those who are just getting started in video content creation of any format. Since January of last year, which is you know over a year ago, all the videos I filmed on this channel were shot on the A7S III. And I've been very satisfied with the quality that the camera has offered me since I got it. Now, while this camera offers all of the top of the line features that anyone would possibly need, it is not designed to be your regular everyday carry camera. And it also costs quite a lot of money. If you're just starting out and you need a camera that falls in the sweet spot between quality, form factor, functionality, and most importantly, an affordable price tag. These are points that we'll be using to check out these three cameras that we have today. The Sony ZV-1, the Sony ZV-E10, and the Sony A7C. Big shout out to Sony for sending these cameras over. Starting off with the Sony ZV-1, I have to say that while it's at the bottom of the list with the cameras that we have here, the Sony ZV-1 packs quite a punch for its level and small size. It's small enough that it fits in the palm of my hands and I think I have average palms. The Sony ZV-1 also fits in my pocket very well and you can just walk around with it and you can go unnoticed. It is a 20 megapixel compact camera that weighs just 294 grams. The size and weight of a camera plays a subtle but important role in how comfortable it is for you know people that are creators, people who are vlogging or who are just recording quick processes. If you need a camera that you can take anywhere without feeling like you have to have the burden, the ZV-1 is sort of a solid choice. Thankfully though, it's not just about the size and weight of the camera. With the small body that you get here, Sony says you get optical image stabilization to keep your shot steady, a 2.9x zoom, 24 to 70 millimeter full frame equivalent of that sort. It offers you a decent range in the shots and the icing on the cake is that this camera shoots in 4k video resolution so that's sort of future proof for you while this camera suffers a few limitations as a result of its size and price it packs so many good features that outweighs the cons this camera offers features like image stabilization which we mentioned bluetooth and wi-fi connectivity it also offers a fully articulating screen raw shooting a built-in nd filter up to three stops time lapse recording and my favorite one of them all is the 900 at 60 frames per second high speed video. Admittedly, it might take a couple of clicks to get to that setting if you're not used to it. I'll leave a link to how to get that done by the way, but on the bright side, you can get shots like these. Yes, those were shot on the ZV-1, this small guy here. Another interesting fact to note about the Sony ZV-1 is its mic. Right on top of the camera right there, you get a built-in mic that offers a decent quality. So you don't have to, uh, if you don't have the budget to get an external recording device, the mic is good enough. And as if that wasn't enough, if you'll be taking your camera to film, you also get a windbreaker in the box for the built-in mic on this camera. And speaking of recording devices, Sony also offers some budget mics that can help you raise the audio quality in your video and we'll be reviewing all those ones in a coming video so do watch out for that all right 
let's get to the next camera the sony zv e10 is another small but mighty camera that offers some shocking features too when the camera came out early last year there was a really big buzz about its capabilities on the internet and after using this camera i must say that it's worth that hype for any form of content that you are looking to create it's extremely crucial that you know the tools you spend money on can offer you as much in terms of the range without having to spend too much money on different devices the wider range in functionality that the zv e10 offers you is that interchangeable lens the biggest reason i would consider spending money on something like the zv e10 over the zv1 is the range that it offers with different lenses sony designed the zv e10 with the same lens mount for its higher end cameras and you know lenses i hooked up the zv e10 with my main lens the g master 24 to 70 and the footage that came out was nothing short of amazing but then you see these high-end lenses are big and expensive and that kind of defies the entire purpose of the camera well sony saw that coming to and released an amazing lineup of small lenses that fit the size of these cameras and offer impressive quality as well. One thing that absolutely blew my mind about the Sony ZV E10 is the autofocusing capabilities. The autofocus speed on the ZV E10 is way more than what you would expect from a camera this size, and just like the design of the ZV1, you have that large microphone at the top of it. If you need more justification for spending more money on the ZV E10 over the ZV1, you should know that it offers four more megapixels and a larger sensor. Again, while the quality on the ZV1 one is great you can be sure to capture more or even more detail with the zv e10 thanks to its 24 megapixel aps-c sensor one of the key features that interests me on the zv e10 is the fact that you can get good 120 fps footage out of this although it's only available in 1080p it still looks decent enough and if you want higher you can shoot up to 4k at 60 frames per second. Now, when it comes to the size difference between uh, the Sony ZV-1 and the Sony ZV-E10, the E10 is bigger than the ZV-1 and it has a much of a bigger grip to it. What I liked about the ZV-1 and the ZV-E10 is that they have this red recording indicator. The ZV-1 has just the red indicator while the ZV-E10 has not only the red indicator, but also a red bounding box that shows you, you know, it's all in your face that, hey, you are indeed recording. Now, let's get to the big gun of the trio the A7. C. First off, there are not many features that separate the ZV E10 from the A7C. It's got pretty much all of the features on there and more. And one major thing that allows the A7C stand out is the fact that you've got a full frame compact camera in this 24 megapixel sensor package. So, what this means is that you won't get a crop in your 4K. Your 4K will be 4K. You will get better bokeh or background blur. Basically, it's more of a professional camera. And as we mentioned earlier, the Sony ZV E10 has that APS in sensor, while the ZV one has a one inch sensor. Another important point for the full frame sensor on the A7C is that it will perform better in low light. It's also the only one in the three that has got this electronic viewfinder so you can put your eye in in case of harsh sunlight or just very very bright light. I also like how you can touch to focus on it as well just like the rest of the others anyway and uh, this one has even more touch focus points. Being a bigger camera as you can see here you've got a bigger grip. The viewfinder also extends the width and you know this size difference means that it also gets a better battery life. This can be seen even visually when you look at both batteries put side by side. The battery on the A7C is rated to last for 740 shots compared to 440 shots on the ZV-E10 and 260 shots on the ZV-1. As far as charging, both the A7C and ZV-E10 are compatible with USB-C charging while the ZV-1 makes use of a USB-A charger. Now keep in mind though that if you want faster charging for the battery in the A7C, you may need to get a dedicated Sony battery charger and you may also need an extra battery so you don't miss important shots and get extended recording times. In the slow motion department, the Sony A7C is capable of shooting 120 frames per second. Sadly, the camera is not capable of doing this in 4K. The 120fps slow-mo is capped in 1080p. The same rules apply to both the ZV E10 and the ZV1. But as we mentioned earlier, the ZV1 has extra features that allows it to push to 960 frames per second, albeit in 720p. These videos again are capped at 37 seconds in your final slow motion video result. Either way, it's an interesting feature to have. The memory cards on the ZV1 and the ZV E10 are placed at the bottom within the battery compartment, which could be difficult if you're using a big tripod 
tripod while the a7c has its own separate side compartment to the left of it away from the battery compartment it's not really a deal breaker but i just thought to mention it because it exists all right enough with the specs and features let's see what these cameras can do i put them to work by making a mini vlog in this video you'll see it shortly just a few seconds now and if you want to follow along with the name of the camera that was used to shoot any of those shots you can see them in the bottom left corner all right without further ado let's go make a vlog So I'm about to get my vaccine now, which is why I'm wearing my face mask and I'm also using the ZV ones camera in body mic So if you don't have a mic, this is what it should sound like. All right, let's get to it uh, so we went to check for the vaccine and They just told us that it's not available without notifying us or anything. So we can't take the vaccine We have to go and look for another place. So we're going to four more locations for this vaccine with we're currently at the second location for the vaccine i hope we get it here i don't know what to expect and by the way the sound you are currently hearing is from the built-in mic of the zv e10 <sighs> yeah probably guessed it there's no vaccine. <laughs> three. We went to three different places to check for the vaccine. You know, they told us that the vaccine isn't in Lagos, but we thought to check anyway. Yikes. Yeah, not. <laughs> Today wasn't a total waste. We just had a sort of positive meeting and we're going to grab lunch right now. So we're currently at the cafeteria. This is one of my best places to come to in Lagos. If you want to eat good food, they have one of the best smoothies and also one of the best boneless chickens. If you want to order anything, order sweet boneless, I can't remember what's it? Boneless sweet chili chicken. I think that's the name, right? I'm here with my brother. And my editor. <laughs> I'm doing a dramatic zoom on your face. <laughs> How are you feeling so far? I start classes for this. <laughs> <laughs> Next. Nice. Nice. Just talk here to be slow. I feel great, you know. Starting four classes. Really? Yes. Four classes. Start four classes. There you have it folks. We have people stabbing classes. Like I think like you are giving We have people stabbing classes for this. This is financial advice. Like the video. It's financial yeah. advice.
So that was a fun vlog to make. All right, let's get into my observations with these cameras and we'll see who they really are for. For the Sony ZV-1, I was very impressed with the video quality that it produced, the 4K footage straight out of this camera. It had way more quality than I would normally expect from a camera in this size. The entire time we filmed during this vlog, everything was filmed with autofocus turned on and it did not disappoint. However, for vloggers who would have to hold the camera up in their face, if you need an eye tracking focus, you might want to consider something like the ZV-E10 which is a little bit higher or maybe the A7C. However, again, we didn't really see that big of a hindrance in any of that at all. Now I did notice a few downsides to getting uh, the ZV-1. First of all was with the battery life. The battery on the ZV-1 couldn't last us the entire day but this is understandable considering the small size of this camera. Thankfully, we had a power bank around to hook it up to and to get it running over again. Other features that were not the best on the ZV-1 were stabilization and low light performance. Since it's a small sensor camera, these features were quite limited in performance. Moving on to the ZV-E10, I also faced the same stabilization issues. Most of the videos we shot were in a moving vehicle so they were sort of shaky but that aside, I think the only thing you may need to worry about is upgrading your lenses for more range and quality. The Sony A7C really impressed me with its low light performance. I could really see the gap between the smaller sensors and the full frame sensor of the A7C. The car wash shots that you saw in the vlog were done in the dark and the camera still held up well. In case you need more light in your shot, the ISO of the A7C goes up to 51,200 and it's the highest among the rest of the three cameras. The ZV-E10 has a max ISO of 32,000 while the ZV-1 has the least max ISO of 12,800. The 120 FPS slow videos were also one of my favorite things about these cameras and while I still wish we could get it in 4K, it's still a decent performance for its price point. I, I don't really expect 4K k20 for something that was not going to cost an arm and probably a leg nah, it's too graphic Something else to consider when it comes to vlogging are the cameras, microphones, the sound quality and any extra accessory that you might need to shoot better. You could hear how each one sounded and they were all comparable both inside and outside. One accessory I found really useful for all three cameras was uh, this grip. It's called the Sony GPVPT2BT. Wow. Sony. Quite an interesting name and an interesting piece of tech by the way. I mean apart from the fact that it's a great choice for holding the camera and vlogging with it, for compatible lenses well, with this thing you can zoom in and out, it can take photos, it can record with just one hand, you also get a customizable button to map to a unique function of your choice and you can even lock all these buttons so you don't mistakenly press any button. When it comes to adjustability you can stand it like a tripod and another cool thing is that for vertical videos you can either vlog with it vertically to make things like TikTok or YouTube short style videos. It's $138 or about 80,000 Naira. Definitely a tool I highly recommend if you're considering any of these light cameras. All right, back to the cameras now. In summary, you should think of the ZV-E10 as having nearly all of the good features that the ZV-1 has and you know, it has the compact camera feel and a solid build quality and then some more features where you can get the change of lenses and even better low light. Then the A7C, think of it as having all of the features that the ZV-E10 has and then some like, you know, the full frame camera, which gives you much better quality 4K, better low light, better battery life as well because of the big size. So let's talk about pricing. If you do not have up to $8,000 spend on a camera and you still need the great features you should probably consider the Sony ZV-1. The ZV-1 currently retails for $749 or about 430,000 Naira. Now, if you can spend $50 more on a camera, the ZV-E10 is a good way to go. This ZV-E10 retails for around $800 or 460,000 Naira, you know, with this lens that comes in the kit. It's less if you want the body only. And last but not least, the big boy of the bunch, the A7C costs one thousand dollars more that's one thousand seven hundred and ninety nine dollars oh, around one thousand eight hundred dollars really and once you punch your calculator you see that it's one million and thirty five thousand naira approximately so what do you think about these cameras which one was your own favorite and is there any question that you have about any of these cameras at all 
let me know in the comment section is there anything i missed just let me know right there in the comment section below and i'll be right there chatting with you guys all right leave your thoughts in the comments there and i couldn't end this video without asking did you guys enjoy the vlog style in this video would you like to see more content like that just let me know in the comment section below maybe we might even consider vlogging i don't know yeah anyway whatever don't forget to hit that like button so more people can see this video and benefit from the knowledge that we've shared in this video be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications by hitting the bell icon beside it all right i'll see you in the next video